So I'm coming from Estonia, from the University of Tartu, and I give a little bit different approach. So you have to understand, we have very few students. There are all together 40 archaeologists in Estonia, and um, we have some um, 15 undergraduate students um, uh, for all, all three years. So I don't teach every year um, uh, theory, but over uh, one year. So there are all these three year students are together. Um, I'm starting a little bit uh, of theory. <laughs> um, my approach uh, to the student uh, centered teaching is based on uh, uh, Gerald's uh, GRU uh, paper or his model. Uh, he's an um, um, uh, adult educator from the United States, from Florida. And um, his um, model is uh, based on that, that uh, um, uh, teaching, he, he divides teaching into um, four levels and also learning into four levels. Some of them, some of uh, those levels, like these red ones, are more teacher-centered teaching. And those blue ones here are more student-centered teaching. For example, um, this first one, uh, where this, the learners are more like dependent learners and the teachers are uh, more like authority and expert, is, is something what happens in usual lecture. So um, lectures are very teacher-centered teaching, way, way of teacher-centered uh, teaching. And the other opposite is um, uh, when the students have an independent project. For example, bachelor thesis could be in in very best way, they could be self-directed learners. And the teacher is not authority or, or expert, it's a more delegate. So then uh, the student Mm, is more self-aware of the teaching process in this stage and also the teaching is lo more uh, learning is more meaningful for them so for me the ideal is the self-directed uh, learners and so the the teacher is more like a delegator but the problem is when with undergraduate students that they are not ready for this stage usually they they, they are more, in Estonia, they are more dependent learners or interested learners. And it's not, it's um, what Cruz also uh, says that um, if a um, learner is in this stage and, uh, and the teacher want to be uh, just a delegator, then it's a mismatch between learning stage and teaching stage. So actually you have to, um, teach learning skills for the students first to be able more self-directed learners. So, and the first thing what one has to ask, or I ask myself, uh, on which days, uh, stage are my students? So I have to know my students. In Estonia, there has been a study about the concept of learning among undergraduates in Estonia. And um, I did m this uh, questionnaire with my students as well. And the results uh, were so that uh, uh, undergraduates in Estonia and my st uh, students as well are teacher-centered, dependent learners with a uh, surface approach to learning, and they have mostly negative attitudes toward teamwork. So this is where I started with my students and also uh, my students are um, with very different uh, prior knowledge. Uh, some of them haven't, ex haven't um, uh, participated uh, none of the archaeological excavation, but some of them <coughs> have very uh, um, huge experience with excavations. And they are also from different age uh, span, from 18 to 30. Uh, some of them are, have already families and they are, have worked already uh, several places, so it's also like uh, very different. <coughs> and also they have different motivation. Not, um, uh, some of uh, them, most of them has uh, archaeology as main speciality, but there are also some of uh, students 
who take uh, theory of archaeology as an optional course. So, um, uh, I designed my course, course uh, mainly as an e-course in, in Moodle. It's a free online learning management system that has been used uh, uh, our university. And um, then I had also seminars, but seminars were optional. So the student could choose if they take a part of them or not. So this uh, course, in this year I had it uh, just uh, in this fall, it's a part of my SOTL project. The SOTL is a scholarship of teaching and learning. So our university pro um, provides such kind of scholarship and the idea is that you study your own teaching. And um, my question was um, how to improve a student learning experience from surface learning to the deep learning. And um, what I did, uh, I gave students more autonomy. So, but the question is how much autonomy is good? Then, um, when you remember this Cruz model, the dependent learner has very little autonomy or independence and, and the self-directed learner has a lot of uh, autonomy during the learning process but the question is what is what is good for exact uh, to my students so i monitored the student behavior in e-learning this uh, in in moodle environment this uh, every step what the student takes there is accounted um, I can see how many minutes they are spending doing the assignments or uh, so everything is I can follow them very well or track them very well and I also um, made uh, questionnaires and my student uh, filled the learning diaries as well. So in e-course I had a course materials and text and also different type of uh, assignments. So um, what I did that, um, uh, that every assignment uh, got uh, uh, is some kind of um, points, for example, five points, and um, all together were uh, 100 points, uh, but uh, the students uh, um, had to collect 60 points, so there were, uh, there were much more uh, assignments in the A course, so they, they had a possibility to choose between uh, different assignments. Um, and also uh, it was important that the assignments had a different difficulty level and also a different uh, type of uh, assignments, for example ASIs or, or film analysis, or different type of uh, test. And then we had the seminars. Um, uh, it was uh, mainly discussion, so uh, I didn't give a new information during the seminars, but it was so that they, they um, discussed by themselves, and I was uh, like more like consultant. We had a lots of teamwork. Um, for example, in this picture, they are doing uh, concept uh, maps. So, um, what I found that is important uh, with the topics uh, is um, to give a background knowledge in uh, philosophy and methodology of science, and because uh, they had so different uh, uh, prior knowledges. Um, what students liked the most of the topics was, of course, the last one, archaeology in the modern world, because it relates to them and they, they really liked it. So, uh, and what is important, I found important with every topic or with every assignment, that um, it should uh, match the learning process. So. Uh, I found for myself very challenging the first one, the preparation, so activating prior knowledge. 
So without that, actually the, the learning process is not meaningful at all. So if the students can't relate uh, with, the, with the concepts or with the ideas, or sometimes if they can't relate with the English articles, because you understand, we, for us, is, um, uh, are most of those articles a foreign language, so it's, it's another problem as well. So you have to understand all those uh, words in Estonian and as well in, in English language. So um, this is the preparation was something I put lots of energy on. And yeah, it was difficult. So also I did, I also always add some practical skills. So this is something what actually undergraduates want to have. They want to have some practical skills. So um, these two questions, this, the last question was always, so how can I use theory in my own work? So if they don't get the answer for that during the course, so the, the course seems to be a little bit pointless for them. Um, some of them, they didn't need all those practical skills. It was so that um, they, they could choose uh, what skills they, they need to learn as well. So it's just uh, for one example how I combined the practical skills with, uh, with the theory itself. So I had a paper of uh, Christian Christiansen about this, uh, his idea of the third science revolution. And in the same volume, it's uh, current Swedish archaeology, there's also five um, opposing papers. So, but um, this practical skill student uh, could practice with this uh, uh, assignment was to, uh, to learn how to set the argument and how to set counter arguments. So, and they, they really liked this uh, assignment, even though it was quite a lot of work. So some students said that they, they read through almost all these uh, five opposing papers to find out the best paper they liked. So it's a little bit uh, to trick students to learn a little bit more than actually is, is needed. Yeah, so uh, I also collected some feedback. Uh, this is because of my this uh, scholarship uh, project. I, I want to uh, understand how much this autonomy is important and, and what type of autonomy. So uh, they found the most important is the type of assignments. So they could, they could choose type of the assignments. But also the difficulty level and uh, <clears throat> yeah, well, um, what was for me a little bit annoying, but for students was it uh, for some of the students they really liked that they that they didn't had a uh, certain term to do the assignments. The course started in the se in September and ended uh, in seventh December, so. The 7th of December was the last date of the assignments. So some of them, of course, did it, <laughs> this, all the assignments in, during the last two weeks. It was a little bit annoying for me because I have to read all the papers through and give the comments and feedback. But yes, it's, um, it was something what they really liked, that, uh, that they had the opportunity to, to do the assignments. And also they... Um, what I saw that first they clicked through all the assignments and then they started to do them. So they, they choose the best they like and, and, and then they started like collect the points. And also they said that this uh, the way uh, that they had to collect the points was quite stimulating. So um, by theory it's actually um, external motivation, uh, not internal intrinsic motivation but uh, anyway it's it simulates to, to to do assignments if you if you get something for even if just the points so um, I also then uh, research a little bit uh, if uh, my uh, approach was changing their uh, understanding of learning, 
Um, I use this uh, methodology of Billy, this uh, Estonian uh, sociologist. Um, but there was a, li a small improvement, but, uh, but not so much. So um, it could be also the way of the question. So it, the, the, there was a lot of answers, but uh, I just put it some of there. So this uh, three first are uh, indicating uh, uh, surface learning and this three last is a deep learning. So my students uh, a little bit uh, had, um, after the course they had 42% uh, uh, of the students had a deep learning approach, approach to deep approach to learning. So what I also uh, studied what I was interested about this um, uh, flow time or, or being in zone, uh, I think it's very important, especially for nowadays students, when that they um, uh, when they are doing assignments, <coughs> they are deeply engaged to this activity. So uh, when they are, then they are doing learning in, in deep way and we no, we are not then then it's uh, actually they, they will forget forget very very quickly so um, yes uh, I, I'm quite happy that uh, that 31 uh, percent uh, felt this extreme focus with most of uh, assignments so I thank you Thank you.